So in my last video, one of the commenters said, should you not have used screws to attach your truss tails to the truss, your extensions over nails? And I say no. Nails are just so much quicker to install, plus we're operating under shear here, which is probably better suited for a nail. I mean, that's a whole huge topic there that you'd have to talk to a structural engineer to get the details on. But the one is not inferior to the other, screws versus nails. I mean, I guess it depends on the, uh, the application, really. But uh, you get the idea. It's, uh, that's a deep subject. So there is a serious, often overlooked medical condition that lots of men suffer from, and some females as well, but mostly it's, it's the men is where I see uh, the most suffrage. It's a condition that I suffer from and some of my friends, especially people in my family. It's definitely hereditary. It's called noacetol. I've suffered from it my whole life. Um, those who suffer with it you know, can relate, I'm sure belts don't fit well, pants don't fit well. So one of the positives of the condition is that you can do a self-examination. You don't have to go to the doctor's office to find out if you suffer or not. So that doesn't look bad. It's not an excessive overhang, just enough to help shield the building from rain towards the foundation, although this will have gutters on it, but that'll be a little down the road. It'll also help keep water and stuff off the side of the building, protect the building from direct sun, etc., etc. Just nice, like you could walk under this. You know, the roof will line, the end of the roof will actually come out probably three or four inches past, maybe three inches past the end of the truss tail there. So, it'd be nice. So here's the worst truss tail I've found, and it's pretty bad, you can see. Um, when I go to tear this roof off, I'll probably end up just going on back with this one because I don't trust it, even though it's strong if you pull on it. You know, back here it's pretty solid, but right here it's in very bad shape. And we also got some bug damage. Actually, I believe this is from a woodpecker, but the woodpecker would not be messing with this wood if it didn't have bugs in it. At least that's my opinion anyway. So you can see it there. They definitely didn't touch the oak, which is much harder. It doesn't have bugs in it. But they wanted this softer pine. So we'll have to make up something. Some sort of spray to spray this wood with. You know, just to keep this from getting any worse, right?
So that looks good. I'm happy with the way that turned out. I mean, you know, pretty simple to do, right? Just got to make sure to try to get them at the, all at the same angle and all at the same length from the from the building. That way, you know, it doesn't veer in and out. But with a string line, that doesn't happen. So it looks good. So check this thing out. I found this extremely interesting. I'd never seen one up close with this attachment. Obviously, I've seen excavators, but it's a felling attachment, I guess you'd call it. This guy's cleaning out a big fence line right around here. And this thing's just knocking down trees easily the size of your average person's leg. Check out how thick that is. It's every bit of inch thick steel there. Nice, huge, what I suspect are high-speed steel teeth. Uh, that's carbide there, little ones. Big chunk of inch steel. This thing's just extremely uh, good at what it does. Watching this guy work was pretty interesting. It's got a thumb attachment. So that comes down and you can pick up the trees and stuff that you that you knock down uh, with this thing. Also could dig out roots as well. Some special armor on this thing for the using with that attachment seeing as it's spinning around and throwing stuff. Looks like I don't know, every bit of half inch thick uh, plexiglass there, armored glass, whatever. It's quite outfitted. Cat 307E2, rubber pads on the tracks. Nice big guard in the back. And a blade. It's just interesting to watch this thing work. I didn't get any footage of it actually running, but man, you talk about moving some brush. This thing will do it, that's for sure. So I had somebody ask, I think it was video before last, why my windows were uh, boarded up or I got cardboard over some and uh, plywood over others. And that's because I had to jackhammer up the section of pad that uh, the temporary support wall was sitting on and I didn't want it to throw in pieces of concrete and hitting my windows because that's my luck, right? Uh, now the part that I really dread Busting out this concrete. This is quite a bit of concrete to bust out. It's exactly The same almost as what I did exactly the same almost as as what I did over here You know, I just busted out this small section the other day that the uh, Jacks were setting on so this is equivalent to what I did originally which is a lot And I don't look forward to it But it's got to be done So that first part that I busted out on the uh, other side of the shop, I busted it into really big pieces. That was a pain to handle. So I'm going to bust this up into smaller pieces. It'll take a little longer. But it'll be easier to load, easier to handle. Thank you. 
about there, another 30 minutes, maybe hour max. Bust out this. Man, I wouldn't want to have to do that with a sledgehammer. It'd take you three days and you'd be completely exhausted by the time you were done. You'd be good at swinging a sledgehammer by the time you were done. But you'd also be extremely sore. And you wouldn't want to sling a swing a sledgehammer. big piece of granite out of the back of the truck so I can use it. And that thing's got some weight to it.
So fall's definitely here. You can tell by the changing of the color of the leaves and the shrubbery starting to die back and the woods are starting to look a little more skeleton-like, really. I love fall. The only problem is that it doesn't seem to last very long. You've got a really short window in between hot summer and cold winter. But for now, I'm enjoying it. It's definitely a pretty time of year and one of my favorite times of year for that matter. <laughs> it's just a warning of these cold mornings of what's to come. If there's one positive thing I can say about winter is that it's perfect working weather. You know, if you've got stuff to do that involves physical activity, you know, winter's the time to do it or fall and spring, right? Because it's hard to work outside when it's blazing hot. Yeah, they're all coming down. Come on, Etsy. So we've had Chloe for about three years, the Collie. And Itsy is going on, well, she's going on 12, right? So she's 11 years old. We just got them back from the vet. We got all their shots and flea medicine. Little Itsy, she's been suffering with seizures, unfortunately. Um, so we're trying to get her sorted out. Um, we're not exactly sure what the deal is on her. But she's also on other medicines for uh, her coughing issue. So. They're doing okay. <laughs> Ball's here. Starting to get some good color. What do you think about it, Chloe? Huh? You all right, Itsy? Yeah, like <laughs> I know. She's, she's old. She could go out of bed too and give her a bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she just had a bath. So she she quite enjoys taking a bath. Itsy does. Chloe, she thinks you're trying to drown her. <laughs> I'm drowning. I can't breathe. And her head's not even in the water. Yes, yeah, two of them. Gray squirrels. Come on. Come on. Concrete fell. Oh, yeah. Is it alright? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I see that it's still attached. So that's pretty good. And it's still made. <laughs> yeah. Off the fingers. Still, still stuck. Still stuck. I have been in situations with angle grinder where I was afraid to take my glove off. Oh, look, a frog. You were scared to take your glove off? Yeah, I was afraid what I'd find once I took it off. Why? Why? Because it, I thought I'd remove half, half my finger. <laughs> Why these little guys like to get under this concrete. It didn't look like it hurt him though. I tried not to put it in too big a piece, it's just hard hand. And we throw it in the truck there, man. Yeah. I don't think you got a hole in there yet. Yeah, there's plenty of holes in that truck bed. Yeah. Most of them are rust holes. The bag would stand a lot, though. Yeah. You're getting rocks around in it. Yeah, that's pretty tough. Truck's 35 years old. Bad when this truck compete with the new beds? Yeah, I heard a lot of the pop. Um, yeah, I heard a lot of the pop. Yeah. When you got strong muscles, it's easy. I know. If you're not old. 
So all that time I said that there was no rebar in this shop, I was wrong. And the owners of this place or the people who built it originally could have said yes, there is rebar in this concrete and they would have been correct. But it would have been these only two pieces, at least in this whole half of the shop because this is all I've found. Now this is a good example of why driving rebar in the ground is not the best idea. Now it's not a death sentence for a concrete to drove rebar in the ground to set the depth of your pour. This one, I'm assuming that's what these were, but they obviously, if that's the case, they missed this one by a couple inches. But you can see this piece, these are both number three, I think, three-eighths diameter, three-eighths of an inch diameter rebar, and this piece here almost rusted completely in two. This wasn't near a crack where water could get down in the ground. This was in a big chunk of concrete that was uh, pretty much shielded and there was enough moisture in the ground to almost rust that in two, which is a bit surprising to me, but you know, it is pretty wet around here. Now the idea is that driving concrete or rebar in the ground can cause you issues because it'll scale up, expand, and bust out the concrete. Well, in whose lifetime, right? If you're doing a shop that's not gonna be, you know, getting freezing snow and stuff on it, and you're using salts to melt that, you'll probably never ever have a problem if you're in a relatively you know, dry climate. But just the moisture in the ground's enough, right? But it did not cause any damage, any real damage to this concrete. So there we go. Yes, it did have rebar in the floor, just a couple pieces. Well, I'm exhausted and also excited at the same time. All my concrete's busted out of here, which is nice, except for the smaller chunks, right? I gotta get those out and grade this floor. My concrete contractor just left. He's gonna make me up a quote to get this thing poured and hopefully we can do that soon. I just hope it's not that expensive. I know it's gonna be high, but I don't know exactly how high. Picked me up some shingle nails. These are coil nails. I'll show you the nailer I got as well. It's neat if you've never seen one before. Some sacrificial air hose because I didn't have enough. This is just the cheap stuff. Cheap air hose is cheap. Good air hose is not cheap. I was going to buy some good stuff, but I didn't want to drag it around here doing roofing and dragging it across the ground. 
you know, and then try to you know, reuse it in the shop. Once I get air plumbed in here, we'll put some good air to each machine. But for now, we got some sacrificial stuff. Forks with my dad's skid steer, makeshift forks. They're just channel iron with some holes blowed in it. Some holes blown in the bucket. This was like that when he got it. So this is what I'm going to use to set my materials up on the roof. It's much better than carrying them up a ladder, that's for sure. So let me show you the nailer I picked up. It's neat, you know, if you've never seen one. And uh, we'll clean up and grade this floor and get some materials up here. So here's the roofing nailer that I picked up. It's a Bostish, I guess that's how you pronounce it, coil roofing nailer for the shingles, right? Because nobody hand drives shingles on anymore. You're talking thousands and thousands of nails. And one of these machines just save you so much time that and wear and tear on your body that they're definitely worth it. And that's it. It just loads as simple as that and uh, it's got a depth adjustment up front so you can set how far it drives that nail in or how hard it sets it and that's it just a nice little Bosch just roofing nailer and this is two boxes different brands same exact thing inch and a quarter uh, what is it 30 millimeter 31 millimeter roofing nails so shingle nails I still haven't got the nails for the sheeting yet I gotta pick those up tomorrow air hose just cheap 50 foot by 3 8 diameter cheap air hose so good stuff right none of it is crazy expensive but uh, you know all stuff you have to have if you're gonna do a roof I mean you could drive them by hand but you know you could also walk to the store if you wanted to but I'll drive thanks So a bucket without teeth on it, probably better off used for picking up gravel, right? It doesn't dig very well. There's just not enough weight in this machine. You could tip the bucket all the way down and just scuffs the top of the ground. So you're going to have to do some shoveling no matter what. So all I'm doing here is bringing the ground down to where I can get the thickness of the concrete that I want on ground that isn't disturbed, right? We don't want to pour our concrete on, you know, loose dirt that will compact, right? We want to pour on ground that's been here for a long time that's not going anywhere, right? It's already moved where it's going to move, at least we hope that that's the case. And, you know, we won't have any settling issues. I've got a tree root here that I'll have to deal with. That's not good, uh, growing under the shop. Um, but that's just what happens, right? And then I uh, got some big rocks that I got to get out as well. That's a monster there. That's one of the main reasons why that and the front of the shop's the main reasons why I cut this extra section out. So I'm officially joining forces with Andrew Camerata when it comes to the idea of deleting daylight savings time anyway. He come out with a video. Go check his channel out. Come out with a video. I'm sure you probably already know him because his channel's like... 30 times bigger than mine, but he came out with a video the other day suggesting that we delete daylight savings time, and I am 100% on board with that. Why they take a precious hour of daylight from us in the winter when we have very limited amount of it anyway, I just don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But they do, and there's going to be nothing but this for quite some time after work. So go check out Andrew if you're not familiar with his channel. He's building a shipping container castle, and it's not small scale. If that interests you, go check him out. The guy knows how to work, that's for sure. He probably doesn't even know who I am, but that doesn't matter. I enjoy watching his channel. It's pretty entertaining, and I've learned quite a bit from him. You know, he's, he's a good equipment operator, that's for sure. So go check him out. Tell him you want to delete daylight savings time as well, because you like daylight and dislike darkness. 
So that's a big rock there. I don't know how big a deal that actually is, but my floor was busted directly over top of it. Oh wow, don't do that. You're going to break a window for sure. Well, that's it this week. I didn't get as far as I'd hoped I would this week, but I had lots and lots going on outside of the shop. But I did get this big slab of concrete out here, got my truss tails cut, and a hundred other things that I didn't show. But unless you've moved that much concrete before, it's hard to understand how much weight you've got to actually <laughs> break up and move to get that out of here. It was quite the job. And it would have been nice to use this thing to have pulled it out of here with initially, because you know, you can throw the stuff in the bucket because it doesn't scoop it well, but the benefit to this thing is that you dump it and you don't have to handle it the second time like I'd had to do with my truck. But my dad was using it and I uh, wasn't going to wait an extra day. But it's nice to have this here now so I can use this to get my uh, supplies up on the roof. And I was hoping to already have that done, but yeah, life, right? I want to say a huge thanks to anybody who has supported the project, the people who believe my videos are worth a quarter a piece to them, or a dollar a month through Patreon, PayPal, whatever, you know, it makes a project like this possible, because otherwise, you know, probably wouldn't be. So I want to say a massive thanks. So that's it. Send me an email if you need anything. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, like I always say. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own. Waiting for the sun